the All India Survey on Higher Education, the last report that I had a chance to read, says we have about 24 lakh engineering students, of which about more than 12 lakhs are studying computer science plus plus. I'll, that plus plus includes AI, AI in healthcare, AI, AI flavors in some sense. So help us understand, you know, what would a B.Tech computer science do? What would a B.Tech AI be able to do that would be slightly different from the B.Tech computer science? How much is the overlap and how much, where are the differences? Unfortunately, the way uh, the AI curriculum is now being taught broadly in, in, in the country, right, is that it is computer science plus plus. Right, it's computer science mostly with a few courses on AI, right? AI, machine learning, deep learning, uh, like two or three additional courses uh, that the students do along with uh, computer science, primarily computer science courses, right? So I believe that's not the right way to approach this, right? So I think the person who really needs to uh, uh, get into fundamental AI work, not not necessarily the AI engineers, but people who really want to get into changing the AI systems, coming up with the next generation AI systems, require a different set of skills that they need to, if they pick it up at the undergrad level, it'll be good, right? So we want them to, uh, you know, be a lot more conversant with mathematics, right? Which uh, most traditional computer science programs do not teach them uh, that much math, right? I mean, Ideally, uh, an electronics uh, uh, or communications engineering student or a math mechanical engineering student would pick up a lot more uh, continuous math than uh, than a computer science student. Computer science students pick, typically pick up discrete math. But a large fraction of the math behind uh, the modern AI systems are continuous math. They're not discrete math. So we have to, from starting from there, right? So we have to start teaching the students a different kind of mathematics than what the uh, computer science students learn. It's not, it's not new math, right? It's just different kind of mathematics, so including things like probability theory, optimization, linear algebra, all of these things they have to learn, right? In fact, uh, optimization is something is becoming more and more of a fundamental skill. They need to understand optimization. It shouldn't be left as an elective, right? Most most uh, curriculum, they, you know, students take optimization as an elective in computer science, if at all. Right? So that's something that we need to fix. And then if you start thinking about at a very high level, if you're building AI solutions, right, you don't really need to get into some of the uh, uh, core computer science topics, right? So things like uh, uh, compilers, right? So how would you translate a program into a machine code, right? So that the machine can execute it, which is a very fundamental skill that a lot of computer science students learn. Right? But somebody is going to do AI. I mean, if your job is going to use AI to write this program, you really, I mean, at that level of abstraction, you don't really need to do the uh, uh, machine translation things. So, so some of these fundamental subjects in computer science, like compilers and so on and so forth, right? You would kind of not want to emphasize too much for the AI students. Maybe do it as part of a systems course, but not necessarily do it as a separate uh, program, right? So like that. So there are multiple points of difference, right? The depth at which you cover certain topics in computer science. Just like when we created computer science as a separate topic out of electrical engineering. Right. Before that, that uh, everybody who's wanted to get into computer science were electrical engineers. Right? They used to, so then you don't now in computer science you don't teach people at the level of transistors and gates and so on and so forth, which used to be part of your computer science curriculum when computer science separated out as a subject, right? Because that people thought that oh you need to understand how the basic circuits are uh, hooked up so that you'll know how to program them later. But the programming abstractions have become so powerful that people don't need to do look at that anymore. So like that, and so in AI you don't really have to look at the computing abstraction in some sense, right? To know how to uh, write uh, uh, better AI algorithms, right? So some of the AI uh, uh, aspects still need you to have a very close interaction with some parts of computing. For example, uh, a lot of AI systems are becoming uh, distributed, as what they call it, right? Distributed means that you have different parts of the programs running in different uh, computers and then they have to talk to each other and so on and so forth. So you have to understand how these distributed systems are constructed, right? So that you know that there are delays here, there are some kind of other issues that communication protocols that you'll have to think about. And so some of these need to be, some, some understanding of it should be there. But you don't really have to go in depth and understand how these communication protocols are constructed, which is what a computer science student would do.
So there are different levels at which you have to teach different topics, right? And then there is things like machine learning, right? There is AI, fundamentals of AI, fundamentals of machine learning, which you have to learn, learn it as part of the core curriculum if you're an AI graduate. In the computer science, you could just do it as one course. Just like I'm saying systems can be done as one course for AI student, combining three, four different core topics in computer science. So uh, three, four different core topics in AI and machine learning could be combined as a single course for somebody who is specializing in computer science alone. That's typically what is done now, right? So what people think is, okay, just split those three courses into, I mean, well, that one course into three courses, now you have an AI curriculum. But then you, are not, you don't have the fundamental math for it, and then uh, adding more courses really means that Somewhere you have to compromise, right? So it's not clear what uh, what are you compromising on. So a lot of, which I think, ideally, the student learning computer science uh, uh, should be able to build computer programs, computer systems from scratch, right? And the person learning uh, AI should be able to do fundamental research in AI and build and should be able to engineer together AI systems and solve problems using AI, right? So the solve problems using AI requires you to have a different mindset. Why do I say this? Uh, computer programmers taught from the very beginning about correctness of programs, right? But then in AI, the program can be correct in the correctness sense, but the output of the program will still be non-deterministic in the sense that you will have a neural network, right? But that will give you the right answer only 80% of the time. So when I'm talking about solving a problem using AI, I have to really start thinking about this kind of non-deterministic solutions, like probabilistic solutions. While I'm talking I'm not thinking about problem solving in computers, I'm talking about algorithms that always give me a right answer or or stop and things like that. So I know I, the, the notion of even what is the solution is different, fundamentally different from computing to AI. So I think people need to be taught that difference, right? And they need to be taught in terms of trying to solve problems using a data-driven approach, using an AI approach from the get-go. So I think that's the that's a crucial difference that we need to tell uh, people between computer science and AI.